Welcome to DRD Technology. As an ANSYS channel partner, we provide simulation capabilities in the areas of fluid dynamics, structural mechanics, electromagnetics, and systems and multiphysics. DRD seldom supports ANSYS software in the central United States. We also provide consulting and training for the entire ANSYS software suite. Our mission is to help clients maximize their utilization of ANSYS software to the highest degree possible. Welcome to a demonstration of the thermal model and capabilities in ANSYS Mechanical. We're going to model this cabinet using a transient thermal analysis. I'm going to hide one of the walls of the cabinet. As you can see, inside the cabinet is a cylinder containing a hazardous material, and we want to keep the temperature of that hazardous material below a certain value. The uh, space inside the cabinet is vacuum, so there is no air or anything else inside the cabinet. So the only way heat can transfer between the walls of the cabinet and the cylinder is through radiation heat transfer. And the, the accident that we're going to simulate is an accidental fire on the outside of this cabinet. We'll let that fire uh, burn for about five minutes and then we'll extinguish the fire and then watch how the uh, cylinder continues to heat up uh, as, the, as heat transfers from the walls of the cabinet to the, the cylinder. I'd like to point out the features that we'll demonstrate uh, in ANSYS for this, uh, this model. We're going to do transit thermal analysis. Uh, heat transfer is modeled as conduction through the metal. We'll also have free convection on ex external surfaces with temperature-dependent convection coefficients. Uh, we're going to model radiation heat transfer, including uh, view factor calculations on the inside of the cabinet. And we, we're going to model temperature-dependent thermal conductivity. I'd like to point out to you the ANSYS products that are capable of doing this model. This is the ANSYS 18 product line. So we've got Design Space, Mechanical Pro, Premium, and Enterprise. And Mechanical Premium on up, that includes, um, or rather, Mechanical Pro on up, including Premium and Enterprise, can all do this, uh, do this model. So of the four products shown here, Design Space is the only one that's not able to, uh, to do this model. Let's uh, jump to um, engineering data. I want to point out that uh, we have temperature-dependent thermal conductivity. So here we have one of our materials, chrome steel. If we click on thermal conductivity, you can see the temperature-dependent thermal conductivity table and the corresponding graph. So that's something that's very easy to model inside uh, ANSYS Mechanical. Let's step through the model tree. We've got these uh, various parts. So this is an assembly. Uh, the parts are uh, connected thermally using contact. So we can cl click on, for example, this uh, first contact region, kind of drill down in details, and you can see that thermal uh, conductivity, the thermal conductance between the parts is program controlled. So ANSYS automatically calculates thermal conductance so that there's zero thermal resistance from part to part. Now we can override that if we want and define a manual thermal conductance. And I'll give you a, an example of how you do that do that calculation. Let's say we actually want to model uh, thermal resistance between the parts. For example, let's say we've got a, a rubber gasket between the parts. We don't want to actually model the gasket, but we want to model uh, its, its effect on thermal resistance as heat conducts between the two parts. So if we know the, uh, the rubber gasket thermal conductivity and we know the width of the gap, we can just say conductance equals K over L and that number is what we put into uh, ANSYS for the user-defined uh, thermal conductance. So all of the parts uh, in this model are uh, modeled to, uh, so that heat transfers between them using uh, uh, zero resistance contact. So here's our mesh. Uh, you can see it's mostly brick elements. We've got a few uh, tetrahedral elements for uh, one of the more complex parts. We've used name selections to easily uh, apply boundary conditions to this, this model. So for example, we have all of the uh, nodes and elements on the top surfaces are identified with N top and bottom. 
is uh, the nodes you see here on the bottom. Vertical surfaces have their own name selection. Then the entire exterior is a name selection. And then for the purpose of modeling radiation, we have some name selection set up on the inside. So we make a little uh, cross section here. You can see what's happening on the inside. So we've got these radiation view factors uh, surfaces set up as, as name selections. And we'll, we'll use those later in the, in the demonstration. We're um, modeling uh, free convection on the outside of the enclosure as it cools. And we're using uh, relations from a book that we use a lot here at DRD by Holman. Uh, this is a graph taken from the eighth edition. So you can use the equations shown here to calculate uh, free convection coefficients for vertical surfaces uh, and horizontal plates facing up or downwards. And we put those equations into a uh, spreadsheet as you can see here. And then the, uh, we just take the convection coefficients as a function of temperature and copy them into, uh, into ANSYS. So here, here's, for example, the top surface free convection boundary conditions. Here we're showing the temperature dependent convection coefficients as calculated inside ANSYS. And then here's a graph. Now, we're, we're allowed to have different relationships uh, for the meaning of, of temperature and these temperature-dependent convection coefficients. In this case, the, the, the temperature that we're showing from the Holman relations is the difference between the surface and the bulk temperature. But you can also evaluate the, uh, the, co the convection coefficients based on the bulk temperature, the surface temperature, the average of the two, or uh, using the difference, which is what we used here. So we uh, have free convection boundary conditions for the top facing, bottom facing, and vertical vertical surfaces. I'm going to turn my, my suction plane back on to look at the uh, radiation view factor. So we have different radiating surfaces that can all see each other. So here's the first one that includes most of the surfaces in the enclosure another one for the front panel, another one for the floor, and another one for the cylinder. So for each one of these uh, uh, radiation surfaces, we're identifying them with the name selections. Uh, we define emissivity, and then we define an enclosure number. And this lets us have multiple enclosures and identifying which surfaces can view uh, which surfaces. So all four of these surfaces are connected to the uh, enclosure one. The enclosure type is perfect, which means that uh, it's a closed system and no heat can radiate to, to ambient. Let's talk about the heat load that we're applying to simulate the fire. So at, uh, at time equals zero, at the beginning of the simulation, we have uh, a fire and we're simulating that on the model by specifying the external temperature of, of the model to be 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to hold that. Uh, for 300 seconds or about five minutes and then turn that that uh, that heat off and then let the uh, the enclosure cool while heat radiates from the hot walls to the relatively cool uh, cylinder and the way we simulate that in ANSYS is with three steps so it we start at time equals zero then end of step one is 10 seconds end of step two is 300 end of steps uh, three is 2,000 seconds. And we have a temperature specified, so we ramp the temperature, which is applied to all of the exterior surfaces of the model. Uh, and we, we wrap that temperature from ambient 70 degrees to 1,700 degrees in 10 seconds. Then we hold that until five minutes are up, and then we just kill that boundary condition. And we kill it by by using this activate deactivate at this step and graphically you can see that this uh, grayed out 1700 indicates that that is uh, deactivated and this red tick mark uh, at 300 seconds with no red line to the right of it indicates that that boundary condition is killed. Let's go and take a look at our 
results. So let's do, uh, let's make a 10 second animation, 40 frames, and just animate what the temperatures look like as we cool this, this structure. And let's make us look at the scoped object of just the interior cylinder. So you can see he's heating up during this simulation and gets to about uh, 1500 degrees at the end of the simulation. Now we did a little kind of a hand calculation to verify our results. So we, we did a hand calculation to estimate the heating up of the structure uh, during the first five minutes. After the first five minutes where you get cooling on going the outside, it's a little, little too complicated for a simple hand calculation. But we wrote a kind of a radiation circuit to model radiation heat transfer from the outside to the inside. This is showing what that circuit looks like. Then we do a, a finite difference scheme where at each time step we calculate the heat transfer rate then we calculate the heat transferred uh, to the cylinder and then using its thermal mask, we calculate its uh, increase in temperature. We put that into uh, Excel and just integrate that simple finite difference scheme. And you can see after 300 seconds or five minutes, uh, the calculation says that the, the uh, cylinder should be at 778 degrees. So let's see how that, that correlates to our model. At 300 seconds, uh, the maximum temperature is 770 degrees, so that kind of corresponds pretty well to the 778 uh, calculated. But you can see the uh, that's really just the max temperature. Portions of the uh, cylinder are as cool as 370 degrees. But that gives us some confidence that the results are correct, and that ends the demo.